Coming up, bring those arms all the way down and extend back up. Personal trainer Morgan Shapiro teaches us the do's and don'ts of this commonly misunderstood exercise. We have uh, diced onions, we have sliced onions, we have diced tomatoes, sliced tomatoes. Chef Ray De La Osa makes our lives easier and healthier with recipes using convenient food items. Save some room though, a new smoothie cafe has meals and elixirs tailored to your health goals. Are you all fueled up now? Good. We share tips to improve your health while driving, learn the latest in stem cell therapy, and enjoy a day at the art museum. All of that and more is today on SoFlo Health. And welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, that is Anna Sui, and we're at the NSU Art Museum for Lauderdale. This is Anna Sui's exhibit. It's all about fashion and covers her entire career, but there's so much more to see here today, and we'll even show you how you can experience this museum from home if you're not ready to head out just yet. But first, of course, you gotta watch this. It feels like it's been absolutely forever since we've been inside of a gym, but here we are at Playground Gym in Davie, and we're back in a gym, and you might be as well. So we brought Morgan Shapiro here to show you some do's and don'ts when you do get back into the gym. I'm just playing test dummy today. Morgan, take it away. Yes, so we are going to go over the most common exercises I see people doing wrong. One of them being the variation of the lap pull down. So first, I'm going to have you show the viewers at home what you are not supposed to do, okay? So we are going to start off grabbing the van, hands face each other, and now you're gonna show me the most common mistakes people make. And I would tell my clients straight down, and as you can see, Hunter is rounding the shoulders. As he gets to the end, he starts to kind of do a bit of a row, or maybe I tell you, okay, little bend in the knees, hips are hinging back, and instead, you lock the knees out. You're still adding that row, and where are you feeling this? Everywhere that I shouldn't be. Right. <laughs> so now we're going to show you what I do want you to do. So we're going to have the arms straight out. Now when I say straight out, I don't mean locked out. The elbows are still a little soft. Slight bend in the knees, keeping the core tight, hinging from the hips, neck is in line with your back. Now you're gonna bring those arms all the way down and extend back up, stopping just about there, keeping tension in your lats the whole entire time. And now an easy way to progress this exercise is get a heavier band, take a few steps back. You can always lean the torso a little bit more forward so you have more distance. But as you can see, keeping the arms straight, so no row at the end. There we go, we are targeting the lat muscles there. So what is this exercise good for? This exercise is great for the lat muscles, which is a big part of your back. It's definitely going to work your core. A lot of these bigger movements work our core. Strength, keeping tension. I like to do this one a lot before I do my heavy barbell back days because I find it really helps me tap into that mind-body connection. You're feeling the tension the whole entire time. You're building that awareness, and then you're ready and warm to go to your maybe heavy barbell row, your barbell complexes. A lot of benefits. Last, but certainly not least, if somebody wants to add this to their workout, how many should they do? If it's at the start of a workout, let's go for like 15, like I said, to get that pump, build that mind-body awareness. Three sets of 15. At the end, if you're using it as a finisher, let's do like one minute non-stop work with good form. All right, well, that wasn't three for 15, so I guess I should do some more. Thank you. <laughs> Currently, the museum does not have live, in-person tours, but that doesn't mean that you can't get a tour. In fact, if you come over here, you'll see there's a QR code on the wall. If you scan it with your phone's camera, tap the link, you now have an audio tour from Anna Sui and the curator of this exhibit. And if you look over to my right and you listen in, you'll learn that this is some of her inspiration. And then behind me is the design process. You can also have this same virtual tour on the website as well. I'm gonna listen in because I wanna learn more. I'm inside Power Fuel Smoothie Shop in Miami Gardens. And I'm kind of hungry, but I think I'm at the right place. Let's go talk to Christian and find out if they've got anything to eat around here. Hey, Christian. Hey, Hunter, what's going on? Well, I'm hungry, and word on the street is that you can help me out if I want something healthy to eat. 
Well, you came to the perfect place because we can customize any meal that you'd like. Mm -hmm. We have great options for pre and post workouts and dietary options also. Or you could just come in and have a delicious lunch. I think I'll go for the delicious lunch. Sounds great. Why don't you go check out Fanny? She's preparing something right now. Great, thanks. Fanny, what are we making? We're making a spicy chicken wrap. All right, what goes into that? We always do the cheese first because we want it to melt when we toast it after. We'll do some lettuce. What do you have in mind when you're creating a wrap like this? I always try to go for the leanest recipe I can. It's a classic Caesar sauce, but mm -hmm. we put like our own twist on it. It's a little spicy. Nice. So I'm going to put some fresh bell peppers. Uh, I want to make sure that people eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Like This is something that it's made fresh every day. It's low in sodium. It's very lean, so you can eat this every day. This yeah. could be a healthy, like an everyday healthy lunch. So now I'm just going to add our sauce. This is our spicy Caesar so this sauce. Is, this is with your homemade spicy yes. Caesar sauce. Spicy Caesar sauce. I won't ask you what's in it. No, it's my <laughs> recipe. <laughs> Good. So I'm just gonna nice. drizzle all that in there, and now we're gonna toast it. So while that toasts, you've also got some other stuff to show us as well. Yes. Well, for me to taste, and that's uh, some smoothies. We make smoothies, and we also make uh, fresh vegetable juices. All right. So how about you say, we let this toast. We'll get the smoothies ready, and then we'll taste it and talk about it. Perfect. Great. <laughs> Fanny made all of this deliciousness for us, so of course I have to taste what you just made. Fanny, while I get a bite of this, tell me of what makes this place special. This is a family-owned business. Um, we make everything from scratch ourselves. Uh, we carefully selected all the ingredients in there to make sure that it's healthy, um, it has flavor, everything's fresh made here. This tastes great, the perfect amount of spice. It's not like too hot, but it's got a little kick. And it's really light, easy to eat, a lot of crunch. And that's what people are looking for when they want something healthy. They don't want it to taste like it's health food. They just want it to taste like food. And that seems that's what you're doing here. Yeah. It's kind of like homemade food, but like in a fast pace. Right. It's like healthy fast food, I would say. Yeah. And now I'm going to get a taste of, I think you wanted me to try this one out. Yeah. What's in here? So that's um, organic, 100% organic acai um, on Sweden. There's um, on Sweden almond milk, fresh strawberries and a little bit of uh, vegan strawberry protein. A lot of the clientele here are vegetarian, vegan, and this is very low in sugar, um, extremely healthy and very yeah. refreshing. You mentioned the family-owned part of the business. Uh, that also makes your empanadas particularly special, I hear. Yes, like these are all family recipes. My, my mother makes those. We have vegetarian options and we also have uh, you know beef, chicken. We have something for everybody. Yeah. Um, we have a sweet one, and um, yeah, we put a lot of work into these. Uh, they're very popular here, yeah. people are, like love them. Fanny, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. Of course. When SoFlo Health returns, more NSU Art Museum, Chef Ray De Leosa's tricks to making healthy meals faster, stem cell therapy, and how to stay healthier while driving. Focusing on you, from your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. After serving 28 years as a firefighter, Glenn Serrano retired only to learn he had another life-threatening battle to face. We have to do a biopsy to find out what that something is. He went to see Dr. Mark Gonzalgo, a urologic oncologist at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, who specializes in prostate cancer surgery. So it's estimated that approximately 250,000 men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the United States this year. Doctor, what does PSA stand for and why is it important? PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. And it's actually a very simple blood test that can be used as an early detection tool to identify or diagnose prostate cancer. Sylvester, an NCI-designated cancer center, offers individualized treatment plans based on the patient's tumor type. From active surveillance, which is careful monitoring of the disease, to surgery, uh, to radiation treatment. By using the latest techniques, side effects such as problems with urinary and sexual function are greatly reduced. Glenn underwent a robotic prostatectomy, a minimally invasive procedure to remove the prostate. Glenn's wife is a cancer survivor, and now he too is cancer-free. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. 
I'm Hunter Frankie, and behind me is a striking exhibit at the NSU Art Museum in Fort Lauderdale. And lucky for you, we have Bonnie to tell us about what's going on here at the museum. Follow me. Hey, Bonnie. Good to see you. Hi, great to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much. What can we expect to see from the NSU Art Museum for Lauderdale? Right now we have over nine exhibitions in the museum. You could spend a whole day here if you'd like, but we also know a lot of people aren't going out still, and we have made it possible for people to access most of our exhibitions and programs right from the comfort of their home. How can they do that? Well, they can go to our website and we have a whole section of virtual resources, including the 360 degree tours of our exhibitions, even ones that are long gone, you can still tour. Several of those include audio as well that will take you through the exhibition. NSU Art Museum, Fort Lauderdale is for everybody. We are always free for children on 12 and under. We are part of Museums for All, which is a federal program that makes it possible for families who are on assistance, such as SNAP, to have free access all year long. We want everyone to be lifelong lovers and learners of art through NSU Art Museum. Tell me a little bit about the exhibit we're standing in right now. Uh, the exhibition that we're standing in is by a New York-based artist, Eric N. Mack. But he asks, well, why does a painting have to be stretched on the canvas and on the wall? Can't it be free standing and taking up our space? It's called Let Me Walk Across the Room. So it's a kind of instruction to mm -hmm. the viewer. It's easier said than done mm -hmm. to walk across this room because there are obvious obstacles that the artist has laid out. Well, Bonnie, thank you so much. That's wonderful to hear, and we're happy to be here today. I'm going to take a cue from the name of this exhibit and walk the room. Be my guest. <laughs> okay. Do. Thank you. We're at Publix Aprons Cooking School in Plantation with Chef Ray, who we haven't seen in a long time, so it's good to see you, Chef. Happy to be here. And last time we were here at Publix, we talked about convenience and we took a tour downstairs, but now we're in the kitchen with Chef Ray, and he's going to show us how to put some of that convenience into practice. So, Chef? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I do want to tell you that we're going to be making a cauliflower fried rice. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, things to do, and you can definitely make it your own along the way. Now, I have a couple of eggs. All we're going to do is we're just going to lightly beat these. Hunter, if you can give me about half of that oil into that pan, please. And then you can just pour those eggs right in there. And then just take that spoon and you're just gonna kinda break them up a little bit, like if you're making scrambled eggs. Those are pretty much done. So you can go ahead and put them into this bowl here. So now go ahead and put the rest of that oil in there. And then I've got some onions and then our peppers. So these items are located downstairs in our produce department. We have uh, diced onions, we have sliced onions, we have diced tomatoes, sliced tomatoes. Really, really good for um, a quick grab, convenient, very, very fresh stuff, good flavor. So what we wanna do here is we wanna let these veggies cook up a little bit. You wanna let that heat kind of build up and then you give them a little bit of a turn. All right, so as you can see, our veggies are getting much softer now. You're starting to develop a little bit of colors. Now, what you're gonna do for us is if you can grate this ginger, just run it a few times. Go ahead and uh, tap that out. Our garlic, real, real fast here. We're gonna take it. If you've had a rough day at work, it makes it a lot easier. Nice. All right, give it a couple of quick uh, chops. Riced cauliflower. You can buy cauliflower florets. You can buy whole cauliflower. Uh, put it in a food processor, give it a couple quick pulses, and you end up with this. However, this is just an awesome convenience item. Now, you want to mix counterclockwise. Counterclockwise? Just kidding. Oh. Uh, We're going to go with our soy sauce. We missed you, you know? Yeah. We well, missed you. <laughs> some sesame oil. We're going to add our eggs back in. Go ahead and break those up. And we're done. That's it? All we have to do now is the most important part. you got to taste it. Make sure everything's good. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And healthy, too. Wow. So, Chef, uh, if people would like to learn more about the cooking school, how can they? If you visit publix.com slash cooking schools, you'll be able to see our entire calendar, more information on how to book private parties, take out all the great wine pairings that we're doing, beer pairings, all the kids' classes, really, really good stuff coming up. So definitely check it out. Thanks a lot. All right, man. I'm going to get back Hope to you. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to get some more. 
Don't drive off just yet. We have some really good health tips for when you're driving. Plus the many applications of stem cell therapy after the break. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We are continuing our tour of the NSU Art Museum Fort Lauderdale with this 360 degree view of a Miami based sculptor's greatest work. His biggest sculpture is his house and it's made out of repurposed materials such as shipping containers. It's really impressive. We've got a model of it here. The room is surrounded by video from his home so that you get the feeling of being there and then there's some footage on the walls that shows you all of the different materials that it's made out of. Just one of the many impressive things that you can see here at the museum. There's still more to see so stay with us and watch this. There's something about a clean car that just feels better. In fact, it feels like it drives better, doesn't it? Well, it's not only just good for aesthetic purposes, it's also good for your health, both physically, and you might be surprised to find out, mentally as well. Hop in, we'll talk about it. One of the simplest ways to take care of your health and the health of your car is to declutter. It's something that easily gets away from us, whether it's kids' toys, wrappers, masks. You want to keep the inside of your car clean and have a place for everything and a thing for every place because it's good for your mental health and just good for your physical health not to have stuff lying around. Also, Mad Max was even able to keep the interior of his car clean, so why can't you? And we're off! It's bad enough that we found that some of the materials used to make our cars in the interior can be toxic to our health. In fact, that new car smell is a lot of the off-gassing from those materials. Luckily, there's a fairly easy way to decrease the risk of inhaling those gases, and that's to just crack your windows open for the first six months of owning your car. Recirculated air is a great way to cool down your car quickly. Here in South Florida, we definitely need that. But once you're nice and cool and comfortable in your car, consider switching back to fresh air to allow more fresh air into your car. Another good health tip while you're driving is to wear sunglasses, especially if you're somebody that's commuting on some of our major highways that send you east into the morning and west into the afternoon. Even if you're driving the opposite of traffic and you see the sun in your rearview mirror, it's a good idea to protect your eyes with some good UV protectant sunglasses. Make sure that you're wearing 100% UV protection sunglasses because if you don't have those, then the shaded tint of whatever sunglass you have on will cause your eyes to dilate, allowing more sunlight to come in and actually damage your eyes further, even though you think you might be protecting them. While a clean car interior is good for your health, be careful what you use to clean. Generally, commercial cleaners are fine, as well as isopropyl alcohol, vinegar, and plain old soap and water. But stay away from bleach and hydrogen peroxide. They both kill coronavirus, but they will damage your surfaces. And when it comes to ammonia, never, ever, ever use that in your car. It's just not a good idea. When your healthy car ride comes to an end, do like Dr. Sam showed us in the past. Turn around, scoot forward, plant both feet on the ground, and then stand up. I also like to keep my water with me because you want to stay hydrated, of course, but I keep it in a container like this one that keeps it cool and doesn't allow anything to leach into it. That's all the car health we have for right now. More to come in the future. Did you know that until October 15th, it's National Hispanic Heritage Month? That's fitting because currently we're inside NSU Art Museum Fort Lauderdale and this exhibit is called Surrealism in Latin America. And I have some good and bad news for you. The bad news is that by the time you're watching this, this exhibit will be gone. The good news is that it lives on forever online through a 360 degree virtual tour on their website. And if you like Pablo's artwork, this sculpture right here over my shoulder. It'll be back in November, so make sure you come back then. For many, chronic conditions mean invasive surgeries and long-term medication. Well, there may be a way to get to the root of the problem to find a more permanent resolution. There's something called stem cell therapy. 
Hi, my name is Amon for SoFlow Health and I am here with Dr. Darren Ham at Neurospinal Institute of Broward and we're here to talk about stem cell therapy. But before we get started, since we are six feet apart from each other, both vaccinated, um, we can go ahead and take our masks off. So if you're comfortable, we can yes, do that. Sir. Thank you. Can you quickly just explain to us what stem cell therapy is? The basis of it is really using your own body's tissue cells to help repair and regenerate tissue that's been breaking down, to help fight against conditions like autoimmune, to help us support the immune system. Athletes are using this all the time. I've got folks coming in on off seasons looking to just keep their body as healthy as it possibly can. Does stem cell therapy cover just chronic conditions or also like things like accidents and stuff? Mm -hmm. So with acute conditions, you know, tissue damage, tissue injury, it's very applicable. It's helping the tissue repair and regenerate. It can be so helpful to speed up the recovery and see better outcomes. How is it different from traditional medicine? So traditional medicine, a lot of times we rely on medications and different interventions like that. Stem cell therapy, using your own body's tissue, so cells from either the adipose tissue or the bone marrow, to help stimulate the repair. When you are doing these stem cell therapies on different patients, do they need to also take traditional medication along with the therapy, or can they stop taking mm -hmm. it? How does that usually work? So depending on the condition, depending on the case. So if it's autoimmune conditions, we're always very step-by-step -step monitoring their outcomes after the treatment. And then from there, with the rheumatologist or their other doctor working in hand with them to see if they're improving in the way we want them to, then they can start reducing their medications. With rheumatoid arthritis, you know, your joints are getting attacked, inflammation's all over the body. The immune system can be regulated and modulated with the use of these cells, and so in turn, your body stops fighting against itself. We're facilitating the healing process. Would you say that stem cell therapy is ushering into a new era of cell-based therapies? I think it's the future of modern medicine. Our bodies are intelligent. The healing that we do every day, when we're able to harness that and direct it to the damaged tissue, I think it's, we'll see this in the future. So we're going in the right direction. We're, we're definitely going in the right direction. The better you're able to move and function, the better your life is going to be. Bonnie was right earlier. You really can spend a whole day here at NSU Art Museum Fort Lauderdale, and that's what we've done today on SoFlow Health. By the way, welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we've reached the end of the show. But when I think about all of this art and design, there's one person that comes to mind, and that's SoFlow Home Project design expert and host, Elena Capra. Hey, Elena, what's happening later on SoFlow Home Project? Hey Hunter, so today it's all about learning how to connect any room in your home with color. Coming up on SoFlow Home Project, we tour the home of a talented interior designer and artist and show you how to create great design flow. Thanks Elena, we'll be watching. That's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone here at the museum for having us today. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, it's goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlow Health, a raw vegan restaurant serving up dishes so good and healthy, you'll think they're cooked. Professor Produce spuds some healthy facts about sweet potatoes, and Morgan has another round of do's and don'ts to keep you safe in the gym. Come back next week for more SoFlow Health. We'll see you then.